In this video, we're going to be looking at music NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain. So let's delve right in. Hey everyone, this is Barry from Music Tech Info. Hope you're doing well. So it's been a while since I've done a video. Apologies, I've been very busy. My life is just <laughs> kind of a bit crazy um, past couple of weeks. And uh, sometimes it can be very challenging as a YouTube creator to, to find what to choose next. I mean, I've got a ton of different AI tools that I wanted to cover. But being completely honest, there's so many, it was like, how am I gonna do that? And haven't really got the time. And then I really kind of missed music NFTs. And then I realized that Bitcoin have recently launched in terms of being able to have NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain. And then that started getting me thinking, well, actually, how can we release music NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain? So that's what I wanna talk about today. So what you'll see on your screen at the moment is gamma.io. So this is one of many of the different marketplaces that they currently stand on the Bitcoin network. Now, what I really need to talk about and explain is that we are super early in this space. Now, I know we are typically early in the NFT space in the music industry anyway. However, this, as you as you know, Bitcoin has only ever been currency in the past, whereas now they've decided to improve the functionality of, of what Bitcoin can actually do by introducing their own NFTs. And there are a lot of limitations to these NFTs. These We're very early in the technology of this. The um, speed of the blockchain can be quite slow. It can be very expensive at the moment to mint an NFT, purely because of the amount of people that are trying to join the bandwagon, a bit like myself, in terms of doing this. But probably the biggest pitfall of blockchain NFTs on Bitcoin is the fact that the file sizes are currently way too small. So we're having a look at Gamma.io and I'll, I'll go into um, some of these collections in a second. So Gamma.io is where I'm currently at. And if I go to uh, Ordinals, uh, which is all about the Bitcoin aspect of, of NFTs, you can create what's called a, a new collection mint and within that you've got inscriptions as well. So if I wanna create inscription, okay, what we're presented with is what we're able to inscript on the Bitcoin blockchain. As you can see, we can have a single image, we can have bulk images, we can have text. Where's the music? Where's the video? And the reason for that is because if I click on single image, you can see that it explains about uploading this image file to the blockchain of Bitcoin, which is found, sounds fantastic. But then what you'll see, what it accepts is WebP for like web pages, JPEGs, very small file sizes for images, PNGs, vector files, and GIFs. And down the bottom is the biggest pitfall to music NFTs on this blockchain, is because it says Bitcoin block space is limited. So we may resize, compress, and convert your image file to this format, fair enough. For best results, keep your still images under 60 kilobytes and your GIFs under 200 kilobytes. Now, I cannot explain enough how small those file sizes are. And um, when it comes to music, you're talking the megabytes, not the kilobytes, which is obviously 100, or is it 1,000 kilobytes to a megabyte? Anyway, it's incredibly small. So. You can see what file types are supported on this marketplace, which is great. And then it talks about the, the file sizes. Currently it's not accepted, but they could allow up to 10 megabytes plus. If they allow 10 megabytes plus, then, I mean, certainly not all music, but a lot of the music may then be possible. So for example, a full track, an MP3 full track of a retro generation that I did was 10 meg, okay? so. That's kind of 10 plus meg is, is kind of within the realms of that, but that's not possible to upload onto the Bitcoin blockchain. So then what I started thinking was, okay, let's compress it. Let's shorten the track. Let's get a clip of the track instead and let's get that on. When you realize how much you have to compress these files to get them down to kilobytes, you then really lose the same quality of that. You're not getting the quality that you want to upload to the blockchain which is unfortunate. Um, so the only way around this is, is to basically, um, well, you can't because you can only upload pictures. Um, GIFs, as you know, don't have 
music or audio within them, vector files you can't, etc. Um, so it's something to bear in mind for this. Now, when it comes to images, when it comes to NFT art, then yes, that's very possible to do because what you can do, you can use various tools on the internet to actually turn them into JPEGs. You could go to canva.com, for example, which is where I produce the thumbnails for these videos, and then you could do it that way. But what I have found is a workaround. That rhymes. And <laughs> so I found the workaround, and the workaround I'll come to in a minute. So if we have a look at the ordinals at the moment, and we have a look at top collections, this will give you a bit of an idea of the Bitcoin NFTs that are trending at the moment and what, what, what is currently possible on this blockchain. So you've got Bitcoin punks, you've got mega points, frogs, monkeys, pixels, blobs, noun punks. If I go to the main page, you can see some examples of these. And yeah, it feels, it, this blockchain feels to me as though it's in its infancy at the moment. It feels like a, if you're in the UK, you'll know a BBC computer, a microcomputer, the, the, the like two bit computers, the four bit computers that, you know, you had floppy disks. It's, it's very, you know, basic in that respect. So I was kind of on a downer really, because I was, I was looking for music NFTs. But then all of a sudden, you start seeing music NFTs, and I started thinking, hang on a minute, let me check uh, this one called Worry. Okay, so they're using the currency stacks STX. This is all new to me as well, so I'm sorry if it's a bit confusing. Let me just play a, clip, a little clip of this track, very small clip of this track. Can you see that's 2 minutes 24 long? If I go to the middle of it, it's a full song. So how are they doing that? How have they got a full song as an NFT, as a music NFT on the Bitcoin blockchain? And then it occurred to me, they haven't. What they've done is they've done it via Stacks. So Stacks, if I go to stacks.co, this is a Bitcoin layer for smart contracts, okay? So that means that you can create your own smart contracts, you can have your own music NFTs via Stacks, okay? and it will use the stacks layer on the Bitcoin. Um, so that's basically what it is. So think of it similar to Polygon on Ethereum. It's just a, a good workaround to be able to do that. So you can see here, Bitcoin NFTs, NFTs secured by Bitcoin are exploding on the network, find NFTs. So that is the workaround. And what it uses is this Bitcoin layer. It's using something called SBTC. So BTC is Bitcoin, and S is the security of that. And it's all decentralized, which is really exciting. So it's a way to actually do that. So let's say, um, no, we'll get to that in a minute. So just to explain on gamma.io, you've got ordinals, which is all on the main Bitcoin blockchain layer, okay? Then you've got a fork of that, which is Stacks, which is a its own layer within the Bitcoin. So that's how it's done as a music NFT. Now, as I say, let's have a quick look at the marketplace for ordinals. So obviously these will just be pictures, uh, text or vector files or GIFs. And this is the kind of thing that we are seeing at the moment. You can see on the gamma.io on the marketplace, you've got verified in a blue tick. You can click on an NFT. You can see all of the information as you typically would in terms of what it's listed for, what the history of it is, what all of the metadata is, and a description. And that's pretty much it. When it comes to stacks, on that marketplace, you'll see, okay, if I go to, I don't know, recently sold, that's a good one to check, isn't it? Then we've got all of those, and you can probably see that the file sizes of those are far larger, and that's because they're using stacks to actually do that. They're really cool, aren't they? I like those. Brilliant. So yeah, so the music NFTs, it's not really possible via Bitcoin on the blockchain as, as the main layer, but via Stacks it really is. Now if you're interested in releasing music NFTs via Stacks, then what you'd need to do is you'd need a wallet. Um, similar to Metamask, but it's called Hyro. So you go to create.gamma.io. So if I go to that now, click on create, Stacks collection, 
create.gamma.io, then it'll explain that you need to connect your wallet. So if I click on connect wallet, then I can actually connect to my wallet from there. So to set up a HIRO what you, um, wallet, sorry, what you need to do is you need to go to wallet.hiro.so, okay? And it's a Chrome extension as well, which is really cool, so you can install it. And then what you do is you go through these steps, so you have to set up some STX, which is a Stacks token, funds to that wallet. So I use crypto.com for that, but you can use Binance, various other things. You then register a name, you then have your secret key that you need to write down and not share anywhere. And what you'll find when you've got that is you'll have your own little Chrome extension at the top. You'll have your own account, similar to MetaMask, where you can receive, etc. And you got, uh, yeah, you can see I've actually put some stacks on there at the moment, ten dollars worth, just to just to kind of get me going. And then you can create a new collection from there. So the steps are. You go to gamma.io, you then click on the create for that, you then get Hiro wallet where you'd share some STX funds to that wallet. Moonpay might be possible, I haven't done that, so don't count me on that. And then once you've got that in there, then you can start to create your collection. One of the things that I found really exciting about having stacks via Gamma is that when you go to stacks and explore collections, you'll actually see that there's their own music section, their own music category, which is great to see, because I know even OpenSea's been struggling with that, they keep taking it down, I don't know if it's a bug or what, and it's just causing nightmares. And then you can actually see all of the music NFTs that have been minted on the Bitcoin via Stacks. So there's some really cool music NFTs to check out here. You can see there's videos as well. Um, just out of interest, I'm very intrigued how many there are. You've probably got less than 100 music NFTs at the moment within that category on this platform. So that, that really does show how early we are in this space. So it's something to bear in mind. I'm just gonna view one now, just to have a quick look. So this is a collection and it has one music NFT within that. And then it's a minute file within that. It hasn't been sold before. The collection was published nine months ago. There's no floor price. It's currently not for sale. Okay, let's go back and have a look at another one. So yeah, here's another example here. Not listed for sale. But you know, it's interesting because you can still make offers and it could be an auction. It may be that it's sold. So I just really like Gamma.io as a platform and it's just so nice to see music NFTs on here because I do sometimes feel that we are not at the front of the stage <laughs> and it can be a bit frustrating when it comes to NFTs. Music NFTs it can be really tricky to, to sell because people have to listen to that music, you know, whereas art NFTs, you see it in a millisecond and you know if you want it straight away with a song, you know, typically I suggest to go through a verse and a chorus before you know whether to invest in a song or not. If you're gonna like it, that takes, what, 30 seconds? That's a lot longer than a millisecond, in my opinion. So it can be really tricky. This chap here, the Bare Necessities tracks, have a look at this. Soundon.btc. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think this one's a cover. Let's have a, a kind of a change of a cover. Talking about Bitcoin. So let's have a quick look. Look for the... <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> That's sold at auction for 404 stacks okay that's about i don't know it's just over a dollar maybe at the moment for one stacks that's really cool that's brilliant wow it was listed for a lot more than that but then it went to auction so just purchased for that price let's have a look at the bid history just to see yeah you can see there's quite a lot of traction on that one very interesting very interesting to see something relatively different to the norm of ethereum or polygon and I know we cover lots of different NFT platforms on this channel. So if you're interested in more NFT platforms, make sure you give this channel a like and a subscribe. Always appreciate your comments. I check them every day. So what I'm gonna do, I've gone back to create and I'm gonna connect my wallet now. So I'm gonna choose my wallet. You can create more than one account if you want to. That's then linked. So I can start creating now. So you need to set up your collection first of all. So the collections are basically the smart contracts that are set up, which are the blockchain applications that manage those NFTs. 
it talks about the different steps that you need to do. So you've got set up the collection, deploy your contract to the network, and request your Mint page on Gamma. So within step one, what we need to do is we'll design the features of the contract. Features can't be changed, so make sure you select it first right time, which can take about 10 minutes. Quick tips for designing your contract. You'll need your assets and metadata for the NFT ready. Takes about 10 minutes. Then you'll deploy it to the network. So it is deployed to the Stacks network, secured by Bitcoin, and you'll send a transaction to do that and you'll pay some gas fees. Once confirmed by the blockchain, your contract will be public. That takes another 10 minutes, but it can take longer if the blockchain is slower. You'll need a Stacks wallet with enough STX to pay for those network fees, usually about five Stacks worth to actually do that. And if you need any help, there's a um, help section there. Request your Mint page on Gamma is step three. So they another 10 minutes and uh, in step three, you'll provide this information and about how collectors can stay in touch. And it's an optional step, so you don't have to do that. So if you're ready to go and you've got everything you need, then you can connect your wallet and continue. So I'll click on continue. I'm then presented with what type of smart contract I would like to set up. You have a continuous option, which is best for auctions, one of one artworks and collectibles for works released over time. You've got the option for public mint, which is great for large primary mints, surprise artwork, profile picture style collection. And you've also got additions, which is best for proof of attendance tokens, such as NFT tickets, software license NFTs, that kind of thing. So I think what I will probably do is do a one of one. So I'm going to choose continuous. It says NFTs are minted directly to the creator's address upon creation. The creator can auction or list the NFTs for sale on the marketplace. Each can have a different price. Collect, collectors can list NFTs on the marketplace where collectors receive royalties with each sale. So the important part of this is that buyers do not mint NFTs. Creators list them on the marketplace or put them up for auction. Artwork will always be visible. Sale prices and NFT sales can't be configured in mass. Ready to continue? Ready to continue? Yes. So add your collection details. So this collection is going to be the collection description. Official Cyber Monday Music NFT Collection. Upload an image to be displayed as the logo for your collection. Upload a folder of your assets to be minted when you deploy the contract. This is optional, so I'll leave that alone. You can select music, website. Again, this is optional. Twitter. Oh, I need to put in the HTTPS. There you go. Twitter.com, Cyber Monday, Muse. Okay, artist address is optional. Select license. So you can select a can't be evil license. I'm just going to put for personal use. And it sets, oh, this is interesting, right. So Gamma.io sets royalties for secondary sales to 5% by default. If you want that changed, then you need to get in contact with support. So that's something to bear in mind. You then have to approve the terms and conditions. And remember, I'm not a financial advisor, but I do encourage that you read all those three boxes to continue. And then you click publish. Now what that's gonna do, that's gonna send all of that information from that smart contract to the IPFS service. And then what I need to do is I need to confirm that transaction so that that starts. Congratulations on deploying your own smart contract to the network. Then you need to put in your own details. So once you've filled out some of this information, further down you'll, you'll see creator highlights. So they want some information on the background as to the creator, and it is optional, but they want to make sure um, that they curate properly and that any information that they'll receive regarding this will really be helpful from their point of view from the Gamma team. So, uh, music, synth pop music, there we go. If I have a portfolio of other prior works I'd like to share with Gamma's community, well, YouTube creator known as Music Tech Info. 
Is your work being featured in muse museums or galleries? No. Does your project or its NFTs have a unique roadmap or other utility worth discussing? And anything else? So, if you're greyed out, that means you need to go back up and complete the other details. You also have to confirm further up that you are the original creator of this metadata. You have exclusive rights to use that. The metadata is not used in any other collection or blockchain. You have the rights to commercialize the metadata and does not use visuals, logos, trademarks, etc. from businesses. Cool. So now I can click on submit at the bottom. Thanks for your submission. Check your email. We'll get back to you shortly. So the idea is, is that now they're going to check all of that information from their point of view. Once you get the go ahead, you'll receive an email and then you'll be able to actually mint your first Bitcoin music NFTs. How exciting. There's something about having Bitcoin NFTs because whenever the general public talk about cryptocurrency, they'll use the word Bitcoin. That's what's in people's heads. Whereas for the past two years, I've been via Ethereum and that doesn't have the same tone to it. It doesn't have the same kind of authenticity as it does with Bitcoin, with the word Bitcoin. So the fact that you're able to produce Bitcoin music NFTs via Stacks is, is going to be huge, I believe, as a music artist. It makes you more official. And I think it's incredibly exciting because if, if this blows up, then... This could really help an artist uh, grow. And looking at how many music NFTs there currently are, there really isn't that many. Um, I love some of these NFTs, though. I think they're really cool. Look at Bad Boy. I mean, that is really cool. And they seem fairly reasonable as well. And it's just the fact that you've got your own music section within Explore Collections, which I'm very excited about. You've also got collectibles. You've got... Fine art, Ooh. Uh, photography, look at that poor pigeon, communities, yeah this is more about the projects really isn't it, and then utility, bitcoin monkeys, 3D stacks parrots, there is also the bitcoin naming system as well that you might want to look into you're interested in reserving your name so there you have it let me know what you think in the comments hope you like this video and it's given you a bit of an insight into how these bitcoin nfts are gonna pan out and i'll speak to you on the next video take care bye